Hey, this is Gary with Today for Tomorrow, and I'm at the Waldorf School of Palm Beach. And this is just an amazing little school here in Southern Palm Beach County. They put out some creative thinkers, and I think that's what the world needs more of these days. And they do that through all kinds of experiential and hands-on teaching. And one of the spaces they do that in is their backyard food forest. And that's why I'm here today, to take you on a tour of this special little food forest and to show you all the wonderful ways that we can teach our children environmental lessons in a space like this. Are you ready for the tour? Let's check it out. Okay, well, they've got, much like my own backyard, they've got a food forest and two long skinny runs. And this is facing east, uh, and it's a little bit challenged for sunlight because of these big oak trees. But these big oak trees also are what provide such wonderful shade in here. So you can see back here out in front of the trees plenty of sunlight getting to some of these plants here all kinds of uh, both edibles and also just native plants mixed throughout this garden uh, anything you can think of really just anything they can show the children I look at the cotton here um, just anything that they can use of course stuff for the pollinators here we have wild coffee and just moving through here, you can see the lemongrass and this wonderful shade under these big oak trees. And that's such a key in the South Florida hot weather. If you're going to get the kids outside, you need that shade. What a wonderful place to learn about carbon sink with these massive oak trees. You know, half the weight of a dry wood in a tree is carbon. And just perfect opportunity to teach that to children right here. And then look at this habitat. Just this is habitat as a butterfly flies through here. This is habitat, so so easy to connect biodiversity and the importance of habitat when you're in a space like this. And as we move through here past the papayas, you see all the little dwarf bananas coming up here and looks like broccoli or something. You really get an understanding for uh, teaching lessons like soil degradation. I mean, typical agriculture, commercial agriculture, we have such a problem with the soil being degraded or farming it off and then replacing it with chemical fertilizers. Here in this food forest where they're composting, no such problem. They're building up their soil and so you can teach those lessons. Moving through here now along to the south side, you can still see a lot of shade. And here's a quail coop they have. I don't see quail in it now. They might be home for the summer break. We're coming up on summer vacation here. But I have seen quail here before. And that's just a wonderful lesson of animal husbandry and just uh, quail droppings for the garden and just them scratching up and aerating the soil. Here underneath this big Jamaican cherry here, you can see down low where we have some lemongrass and again flowers for the pollinators. Just a wonderful idyllic little space and you can imagine teaching the lessons of carbon footprint with all the fruit coming off of these plants right here in the school versus being shipped across oceans and trucked across continents. Here you can see a beautiful carambola star fruit, and down here some Suriname cherry, and there's just herbs throughout. Going under a mango tree here, and you think about the lessons, and as you look at all this diversity here, no grass except for the lemongrass, and you can think about the lessons of water scarcity. As we know, when you have a lawn, you have to use a lot of water. And here in the food forest, you don't. And in keeping with that, pesticides. No pesticides here, because as you can see on the this mango tree here, I don't know if the camera will show all these ants. And you just have, for every pest, oh, and look, we have like a passion fruit creeping up here. It's just an amazing little food forest. Well, and for every pest, there's a predator. So there's no one species uh, getting a real firm foothold in here. 
So the diversity, the lessons in diversity, pesticide, water scarcity, food scarcity, soil degradation, habitat. It just goes on and on, really. Global warming, carbon sink, carbon footprint. What a beautiful little space this is. And this is all taken care of by the students and the teachers. What a labor of love. As we get back here through the bananas, it looks like that's a jackfruit. Uh, this was a Jamaican cherry. I guess maybe it's died. That's unfortunate. But behind it, it look, looks like I see a chocolate sapote. And then they had a bee's nest in here, a beehive. Um... I don't know what happened. I'll have to follow up and see what happened there, but that's another wonderful lesson you can have with the children, with the pollinators. So I'm gonna take a moment here in the shade, and that's the beautiful thing about this is you have all this shade. So it may make it challenging to maybe get some things to fruit, but the flip side is that you have a beautiful spot to get out of the sun any time of day and really learn some wonderful lessons or just relax. They do a lot of kind of, uh, I would say, work on the mind and the body and the spirit here in this school. It's a very loving place. It's not just about the academics. It's, it's very holistic type of learning. And you really feel that when you're out in a space like this. Well, how beautiful was that, right? What an amazing little food forest at an amazing little school. If you're in the South Florida area and you're looking for a school for your children, please check this place out. I can't say enough good things about it. And if you're an educator or just a concerned parent and you're at a different school, talk to your school about planting a food forest. As you can see, it's just an amazing space to teach all kinds of wonderful environmental lessons to our children. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember, it's the little things we do in our daily lives today that make such a big difference in all of our tomorrows.